You're watching Paradise TV News. My name is Maria Mabojang. First, the headlines. Gambians express mixed views about economic soldiers' stay in the country. Nigeria records highest number of out-of-school children in the world. In sport, Antelote shows solidarity to Kalilu Kulubali. And on the international front, U.S. President Donald Trump says the U.S. is not pulling out of Iraq. Thank you for joining us and on our first story. The economic forces that came into the country in the wake of the row that erupted after the former president refused to relinquish power following his defeat in the 2016 presidential election have had their stay extended after the initial six months on to a year and now to 2021. This has raised concerns among Gambians. Paradise TV's Louis Alsan was out and about and sound the opinion of the public on whether they should stay or leave. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, intervened militarily in the Gambian constitutional crisis that occurred in December 2016. Since the 19th of January 2017, as the date ECOWAS troops have been in the Gambia to help in ensuring stability. Speaking to the public on Thursday, people expressed diverse views on economic stay as these two wants the economic forces to stay. Economic forces should stay. We were unable to do it ourselves. It is true that every country has its rights to govern itself, but we couldn't sustain the situation. So the ECOWAS forces should stay until everything is safe. Meanwhile, others express that the economic forces should leave. I see no reason why they should be here, because the way the country is going, crime rate is still high, and I don't see what they are doing to stop it. Gambian girls should be mindful because they are overmingling with them to an extent that some get impregnated and after all they get is just chicken chin. I see no reason why the economic should still be in the Gambia. The economic troops who were deployed in the Gambia as part of an international response to ensure respect for the result of the country's 2016 presidential election were supposed to stay in the Gambia for six months, but now the government has extended their stay to five years. For Paradise TV News, I am Luis S. A. Alsan. A panel discussion on the theme trans transition on transformation at the fourth annual Tough Africa Global Conference and networking, a panelist intimated that the country's health sector remains challenged and calls on government to do more in uplifting the sector. Sally Jeng has more. The country's health sector has been facing several challenges. This has prompted to the call of a major reform and the decentralization of the sector by health experts. Dr. Ramunjai of MRC Europe <coughs> said the country cannot develop without investing in the health sector. We need to restructure the Ministry of Health. It needs to be restructured in line with this new vision. At the, at the moment, at this current time, uh, the ministry is organized in that compass its ability to actually uh, 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 deliver its technical responsibilities. Yeah. So we have about 16 or 17 directorates, nine of them at the central level, others at the regional level. And these directorates actually almost uh, uh, function autonomously without much coordination from the center. And then this hampers the, 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 the level of technical directives at the level of the ministry and uh, what it gives to, to the regional uh, centers. She also raised concern over cancer and other deadly diseases. We don't have that many specialists. I told you that cancer uh, is on the increase, but we don't have a single oncologist, we don't have a single neurologist, we don't have a single psychiatrist. I could go on and on. And we need to start training our doctors in country. We need 
Because when we send doctors outside, for each doctor, government has to pay about $60,000, and that excludes the airfare and what they, but if we, and then while they're away, they're looking after other populations. But if we actually get help to bring in experts over a seven year period to train our doctors in country, while training, they're actually serving the local population. It will save the government a lot of money um, um, and, 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 and I think it will lift the quality of care that we give to the local population. Meanwhile, there seems to be a significant reduction in maternal death, but however, continues to be a threat to the rural communities. Women continue to die in childbirth. One of the reasons for that is lack of access to emergency care. I mean, if, you, if, if a woman in the eastern part of the country, in the upper river region, for example, goes into obstructed labor and doesn't have an ambulance, it, she has to go by Saret, often uh, through very difficult roads, and then has to cross perhaps the river in an overcrowded ferry, if the ferry is there. And if it isn't, often the outcome is fatal. Every year, about 14 million women around the world suffered from post-mortem. Severe bleeding after birth is the largest direct cause of maternal death. In addition to the suffering and loss of women's life, when women die in childbirth, their babies also face a much greater risk of dying within a month compared to the babies whose mothers survive. According to WHO's report on December 20, 2018, and in the continental news, UNICEF has reiterated that in 2018, while the primary school enrollment has increased in recent years with the net attendance of about 70%, Nigeria still has 10.5% out of school children, while well, the world's biggest number it said 69% of those children are in northern Nigeria, just as 60% of those out of school children are girls. UNICEF Deputy Representative in Nigeria panel, Ironside, also confirmed the figure, adding that a ministerial strategy plan states that Nigeria has 10.5 million children aged 6 to 14 out of school. al Majiris children, particularly boys, who have never attended school. In her statistics, Bauchi State has the highest number with 1.1 million children that are out of school, followed by Katsina with 781,000. 500. Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary, Universal Basic Educational Commission, who begged Mr. Hamid Boboi said that the number of out-of-school children had increased between 2010 and 2015 from 10.5 million to 13.2 million bordered by the increasing rate of out-of-school children in Nigeria. Eat and Go Limited, in partnership with Slum to School Africa, have earmarked 50 million naira for 1,000 out of school children to return in school 2019. Speaking during a press conference in Nigeria, Chief Executive Eat and Go Limited Patrick McMichel said this initiative seeks to directly contribute 50 million naira generated from proceeds of select products from Domino's Pizza, Cold Stone Creamery and pink berry gourmet frozen yogurt. While explaining that the sponsorship for each child was valued at 50,000 naira, he noted that 100 children will receive quality education, coupled with psychosocial support. A delegation of foreign affairs ministers from two regional blocs, the Southern African Development Commission and the International Conference on Great Lakes Region, met with the President Kabila on resolutions reached after a summit held in Brazzaville on Thursday. Leaders from both blocs met to discuss the electoral process in DRC, with their major concern being the spate of violence even as Congolese were to cast their ballots on December 30th. The violence in certain localities of the country is likely to compromise the serenity of the voters according to the final communique of the regional summit. The communique does not provide further details on the violence. About 10 people died during the campaign according to various sources in the DRC. The government has disputed these figures. Kinshasa did not send a representative to the meeting which had presidents of Namibia, Angola, Zambia, Botswana, along with their host, Congo Republic President Denis Sasungesu. The December 30th date was reached at a country elections body, Seni, after Infano destroyed voting material meant for the capital, Kinshasa. The original date was December 23rd. The communique is signed by this
Lusaku, Congo Brazzaville, Zao Lorenzo, Angola, Heg G. Jin Gabo, Namibia, Ega Lungu, Zambia, and Mokwesi Eric Masisi, Botswana. Three other countries closely monitoring the situations in the DRC were only represented at lower levels, Rwanda by its foreign minister and Uganda and South Africa by diplomats. On the same day that the mini-summit was taking place, Seni announced postponement of polls in three cities known to be strongholds of the opposition, Beni, Butembo and Yombe. The first two cities, because of the Ebola outbreak, whilst in Yombe, insecurity was cited as a main issue. An estimated 1.2 million voters will not be able to cast their ballots until March 2019, Seni added. Medical students at the University of Garda Reef in Eastern Sudan joined doctors at a central hospital on Wednesday to demand that the President Omar al-Bashir resignation as anti-government protesters entered their eighth day. Sudanese doctors who launched a strike on Monday to protest the government called on members of other professions to join the nationwide work stoppage. The medical students chanted slogans against the government as they left their university campus and entered the nearby hospital, witnesses told Al Jazeera. Security forces responded by cordoning off the hospital, activists said. The students and the doctors expressed their support for their fellow demonstrators and their condemnation of the government's use of force against them. Riot police in Hatum had used live ammunition and tear gas in an attempt to disperse protesters marching towards the presidential palace on Tuesday. Also on Wednesday, an umbrella coalition of independent professional unions said a protester injured in anti-government demonstrations had died of his wounds, reported the Associated Press News Agency. The victim, identified as Abu Zar Ahmed, was reportedly shot in the head last week in Gadarif. The coalition had called for a nationwide work stoppage on Monday after doctors began an indefinite strike. Striking doctors have refused to work, except to treat emergency cases, in a bid to bring the government to a standstill. At least 12 protesters have been killed since demonstrations decrying price hikes and wider economic woes gripped the country since December 19. The protests have since escalated into calls for Basir to step down. Amnesty International said it had credible reports that Sudanese police have killed 37 protesters since the protest began. Business news is up next. In business, in their drive to support young entrepreneurs, Tough Africa's number one million startup pitching uh, has finished with her apparel, a fashion brand, clicking the number one million. Sally Jang reports. Ami Sohna, the founder of her apparel, won one million dollars from Tough Startup Business Pitching Competition stage among young entrepreneurs in the country to reduce the unemployment rate. Ami, a 19-year-old, said a lot is expected from her to encourage young people to take up entrepreneurship. Yeah, with this million dollars, I have a, a lot on my shoulders right now, a lot to do, because um, work is just getting started. Right now, work is just getting started. Um, I've started my fashion boutique with a million dollars. I'm going to complete that. Um, make more buyers. Take the business to another level. Go international. Her apparel's main aim is to promote modesty. With this million dollars, um, it's the first step to reach that goal. And um, I'm going to work so hard to make a lot more and take the business international. That's priority. My age. My age. Everyone thought I was just doing nothing because everyone underrated me because I'm just 19 so they thought I wouldn't go anywhere. But with hard work, dedication, putting your mind into what you want, anything can happen. Every, anything is possible. It's my, it's my age because I had a lot. So I just started and I didn't want to match your hand. But come last month, but come now, my mother is so lovely. Be a gift for my aunt. So Alhamdulillah, ask my family, do my lunch. My sister is like this, so I come with my lunch and all of that. So Alhamdulillah, you'll be surprised. So you're a rasa. So you're in certain language. 
inshallah in 2 3 years ñi ngi wax la neen ha paral mu ngi fa neen dudut lo pa fu nek ray la so yeah the second winner was Modu Lamin Fati, the founder and farm manager of ML Poultry Farm, who had received five hundred thousand dollars at a conference. I believe this initiative will help a lot of Gambians to realize that their dream. As me, I'm one of the winners. So with the five hundred thousand, it will really help me a lot because I'm working on my expansion plan to increase my production capacity to two thousand five hundred, and that will require huge amount of investment. So with this five hundred thousand, it will cover almost a lot for me to implement the, this project and this project will benefit the, me and will benefit other people because it has the potential to create employment for six people full and part-time. Tough Africa Global through the Tough Foundation has deemed it necessary to lower the high unemployment rate with youth unemployment rate at 38 percent in the Gambia according to a UNDP research. This will fit in the gap to provide employment for youths. For Paradise TV, Sohna Tunkara. Sports is up next. Paradise FM, Paradise the best radio in town. With Paradise FM, you'll serve the latest tunes hip hop and RB, reggae, salsa, mbala. Broadcasting live 24 7 on 105.7 FM. As well as online streaming on www.paradisefm.gm with the best quality audio output. Find the best DJs and presenters to entertain you with a high level of professionalism. Investing in the latest high tech equipment, your adverts are played with the best automation software that gives you an exact schedule for real time monitoring. Absolutely number one. The difference between us and other media houses is that we have the best quality materials. While working here, it's exciting. I study video editing in Mediamatic. Mediamatic has a great impact in my country. I'm very proud to be here. This is Mediamatic. Mediamatic. We are the media. In sports, Napoli boss Carlo Ancelotti said his team asked for the match at Inter Milan to be suspended because of the alleged racist chanting. Carlo Ancelotti claimed Kalilu Kulubali was targeted at the San Siro where the Senegal defender was sent off. Lutaro Martinez scored the 91st minute winner for Inter Milan before Napoli also saw forward Lorenzo Insignia dismissed. The next time we will stop playing even if we lose the match, Ancelotti said. What happened today is not good not only for us but also for Italian football as a whole, the former Chelsea boss added. I am very sorry about what happened to Kulubali. The boy was on edge. He is an educated footballer who was targeted. Despite our request, the match was not interrupted 
interrupted. I'm unhappy because three times uh, we asked for the match to be suspended. After the match, he posted on Twitter, I am sorry about the defeat and especially to have let my brothers down. But I am proud of the color of my skin to be French, Senegalese, uh, Napolitan and a man as well. Napoli's 27-year-old Algerian left-back, Frozi Golam, posted a message of support. It was painful to hear racist chants directed at my brother, his Twitter post read. Boxing Day provides mixed feelings for some teams in the English Premier League as Liverpool extend their lead at the top. Manchester City were beating two goals to one at Leicester City to drop to third in the English Premier League table, seven points behind leaders Liverpool. Bernardo Silva gave Manchester City the lead in the 13 minutes before Mark Albright and Jimmy Vardy snatched all three points for Leicester City. Leaders Liverpool dispatched Newcastle four goals to zero to continue their impressive form over the Christmas period and open up a six-point lead at the top of the table. Dejan Lovren opened the scoring on 11 minutes as Mohamed Salah scored his 13th league goal of the season from the penalty spot. Jandon Sakri and Fabino completed the 4 0 route. Tottenham moved level with City with a victory and duly delivered as they made it 11 goals in three days with a 5 goals to zero victory over Bournemouth. Arsenal were held to a 1 1 draw by Brighton as Pierre Emerick Aubameyang opener was cancelled out by Jorgen Lusadia, meaning that the Gunners have managed just one win in their last four matches across all competition. Ole Gunnar Schultz made it two wins from two to start his Manchester United tenure with a three goals to one win over Huddersfield Town as Matic and Paul Pogba double was enough to seal the second victory in a row. Well, that's all for sports, but Global News is up next. <laughs> Do you know that when you replace incandescent bulbs with LED energy efficient bulbs, you save energy? Replace all incandescent bulbs with LED energy efficient bulbs. Whenever you save energy, you save money. Welcome back and we take a look at news in the global front. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have made an unannounced Christmas visit to U.S. troops in Iraq. They traveled there late on Christmas night to thank the troops for their service, their success and their sacrifice, the White House said. Mr. Trump said the U.S. had no plans to pull out of Iraq. The trip came days after Defense Secretary Jim Mattis quit over divisions about strategy in the region. The U.S. still has some 5,000 troops in Iraq to support the government in its fight against what remains of the Islamic State, ISIS group. However, a planned meeting between Mr. Trump and Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi was cancelled. Mr. Mahdi's office said it was because of disagreements on how to conduct the meeting. A phone call between the two leaders was held instead and the White House said Mr. Mahdi had accepted an invitation to visit Washington. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin has overseen a test of a new hypersonic missile declaring that the weapon is impossible to intercept and will guarantee the country's security over the coming decades. Speaking to Russia's top military brass on Wednesday after watching the live feed of the launch of the avant-garde system from the Defense Ministry's control room, Putin said the test was a great success and an excellent New Year's gift to the nation. According to the Kremlin, the missile was launched from the Dombarovsky missile base in the southern Ural Mountains and hit its target on a test site in Kamchatka, about 6,000 kilometers away. The avant-garde is invulnerable to intercept by any existing and prospective missile defense means of the potential adversary, Putin said after the test, adding that the new weapon will enter service next year with the military strategic missile forces. The hypersonic missile was among the array of new nuclear weapons that Putin presented in March, saying that Russia had to develop them in response to the development of the U.S. missile defense system that could erode Russia's nuclear deterrent. When first presenting it, the Russian president said the new missile system has an intercontinental range and can fly in the atmosphere at 20 times the speed of sound bypassing the enemy's missile defense. He emphasized that no other country currently has hypersonic weapons. Putin has said that avant-garde is designed using new composite materials to withstand temperatures of up to 2,000 degrees Celsius that come from a flight through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. Well, that's all for tonight's news bulletin. But before I take a leave of you, a recap at the main top stories. Gambians express mixed views about economic soldiers' stay in the country. Nigeria records highest number of out-of-school children in the world. In sports, Ancelotti shows solidarity to Kalilu Kulubali. And on the international front, U.S. President Donald Trump says the U.S. is not pulling out of Iraq. Well, news, in Mandinka, news in Mandinka is at 8 o'clock and in Wallop is at 9 o'clock. Thank you for watching and good evening.